All right, fans of music, welcome back. It's Dave. It's the real music observer. Why I like 90s country music. That is the topic of this video. And yes, I'm observing music in real time for real people just like you, just like me. Uh, it started when I fell off the turnip truck. I've told the story, not literally, but maybe, I don't know if there was a truck and it had turnips on it and I fell off. I don't know if it really happened or not, but here's the thing. All right, I hit the pavement and then I crawled into a bale of hay and then it was 90s country all the way. I mean, I think I turned on this station called Boston's Country Club back in the 90s and it was a big deal. Um, I think it's Lauren and Wally now again, but back in those, I think actually Lauren and Wally, I think were still there in the morning, but they were playing country instead of, you know, classic rock or whatever. This was a hot format, and the reason it was a hot format uh, is because the music was really good. And um, the people who were producing these albums, uh, they were rocking it out. They had guitars that were clear. The pedal steel was there, but it was kind of toned in a way where it wasn't like too whiny. There were a few song exceptions there. A more traditional country was out there. But you know, you got a guy like Joe Diffie out there, Third Rock from the Sun. I mean, listen to that song. Come on. Come on. That's a, <laughs> that's just an all-out rock and roll with a country kind of theme going there and lyrically speaking, a lot of fun. I mean, that was, I think, the first song that just hooked me. But then I got into, like, Brooks and Dunn, and, of course, Garth was there, Clint Black and Vince Gill and Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus had broken through on the top 40 with Achy Breaky Heart. A lot of people don't realize. And that just, that, that was a, just a force of nature because he's competing with all this dance music and rap and all this stuff that was coming out around him. And he's on the top 40. Just crazy. But then, you know, I got deeper into this stuff. Neil McCoy, bands like Diamond Rio, uh, artists like Leroy Parnell. Uh, more bands like Sawyer Brown and the Mavericks and Little Texas. Man, God bless Texas, right? What a great band. Sounds a little like the Eagles here and there. And that's why I think I really liked it. Uh, obviously, the Eagles had reunited in the 90s, but they weren't cranking out new albums. They had the Hell Freezes Over and a few tracks, but... Um, I was hooked. I even got into George Strait, who is probably one of the greatest country album or artists of all time. Just amazing. Sammy Kershaw. I remember him. Uh, fun stuff. Colin Ray, who can sing the phone book. Just amazing. And like I say, Alan Jackson, who um, was making fun of me when he sung his song, Gone Country, because that's how I was feeling. Uh, I wasn't singing it, but I was listening to it boy from the northeastern part of the country and then going to concerts martina mcbride and uh reba mcintyre and just loving the music getting into all the, the nostalgia stuff that was happening at the time um this really was a great format because again it was country but it was rocked up and it wasn't um, it wasn't processed like it is now. Now it's all, you know, the computers are getting in there. You're getting beats. You're getting guys that are doing rap. They're playing like one banjo and then they're playing a heavy metal chord over it. And it's, it's just bad. These guys were just great and gals. They were, uh, great singers. I mean, Faith Hill, I mean, Tim McGraw, right? Got his start really in the nineties. And this song would stop me every time when I'd hear it because I'd need a box of Kleenex. Uh, don't take the girl. I mean, who writes a song like that? Now, I know Tim didn't write it, but who even records a song like that? Holy crap, Batman. Probably one of the saddest things I've ever heard, but it was very effective. And the 90s will always be, for me, about country music and really the best decade for country music ever. I mean, that spilled over into the early 2000s a little bit, uh, but as the decade wore on, uh, the music began to change, and, and those core artists that had enjoyed about a decade worth of success were being replaced, and by mostly people who weren't 
as talented uh, and material that wasn't as catchy and as fun. All right, I'm reminiscing 90s country, the best, the best it ever was. All right, be back soon. See you then.